What's up everyone? My name is Platinum Howler, coach of your Coquitlam Red Gyarados, and today I am bringing you my week 6 match of the IBL versus uh, Maralt and his Slovenia Slowbros. You can see his team over on the right side of the screen and his two Z users are Ladias and Alolan Golem. So if you watched my meme upload last week, you would know that we got a forfeit win for week five of the IBL. So we are now uh, three and two minus four differential because we get uh, three points back from the uh, forfeit. So hopefully this week we can inch closer back to, uh, or inch back closer to a uh, positive differential. Uh, I think that this could be could be a game that we get a lot of differential or it could be another one that we lose a lot of differential depending on uh, how we play because this team that I have is very 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 defensive and other than this uh, chronot that I will uh, get to in a second but yeah this is a really defensive team and this could I have a feeling that this game is going to last quite a while however we do have this adamant banded Crawdont to uh, break through the walls on his team very early on in the game. We are going all out with Crab Hammer, the most powerful water type attack that it can learn, uh, risking the 10% uh, chance to miss, uh, but I feel like I'll be clicking knockoff more often than Crab Hammer anyway, uh, especially if he does bring the uh, Vaporeon, because Vaporeon is uh, not going to be taking any damage from Crab Hammer at all. Aqua Jet is there because what other move do you really run on Crawdont? If I manage to keep Crawdont in the back and need the powerful priority for something like uh, Megalopony, then that will be great. And then the fourth move is actually going to be Facade because I can switch this into a Vaporeon and take roughly 30% from a uh, Scald from him. However, if I get burned, then none of my other attacks are going to be doing much damage to him. So. If I do get burned, I can click Choice Banded Facade and still do some damage to whatever he wants to bring in. Pretty simple set. This can also come in against the uh, Registeel, do a lot of damage. Uh, I don't think it can switch into Gliscor necessarily. Uh, it might be able to switch into Arcanine depending on what his uh, set is, if he has Wild Charge or not. I could have probably ran a little bit more HP investment to try to take some hits from the things that I just mentioned, uh, but I decided just to go uh, max speed adamant because uh, I actually, with this uh, speed stat, outspeed max speed jolly Alolan Golem by one point. And Alolan Golem, he hasn't brought it to a game yet from what I've seen, but I feel like there's a very good chance that he could bring it against me this week. He has a very similar Z-move combo to that of Clutch, who we played two weeks ago. Uh, his two Z-captains were Lando T and Vickavolt, Lando T being his tier 1 and then Vickavolt being the tier 5. Alolan Golem is another tier 5 electric type that has the ability to run a Z move and I feel like there's a good chance it could come because uh, Alolan Golem actually gets Magnet Pull as one of its abilities so it can come in pretty freely against Celesteela and trap my Celesteela in and click an electric Z move to uh, knock me out immediately and I don't want that to happen so that's why we're carrying Shed Shell. Uh, because I don't want to be trapped by Golem, and I really don't think that he will expect me to run Shed Shell. If he brings Golem in hard to Celesteela, I, uh, I think that he will just immediately click a Gigavolt Havoc right off the bat. So, in that case, I will probably just go right into my Hippowdon, or my Zeraora, one of the two, uh, that are both immune to Electro-type moves, and he will waste a Z-move like that. Other than that, pretty standard set here. Uh, I have Heavy Slam to hit pretty much everything on his team. Lead Seed Protect is annoying but standard and good, uh, especially against the likes of Vaporeon. I'll be recovering a ton of HP from that thing. Uh, he can do about like 20% to me with a Scald. If he burns me, then that's okay because I might be able to cure that burn with my Meganium that I will be uh, getting to. 
and I can just sit there, click Elite C to be annoying to him. Uh, yeah, standard, pretty standard Celestila, walls a fair amount of his team. The main threat that this is here to check is probably going to be that Superior. So Superior, similar to when I played Grey in Week 2, I had a kind of a 2-mon combination to beat his uh, Shaman because I thought that there was a good chance that he would bring a Subseed set. So how, this is, how I'm going to play this is Celesteela is the initial switch in to Superior. If he goes for Leaf Storm, then I stay in and click Heavy Slam against him. And with my investment, I hope that I can get a uh, two-hit KO uh, on the Superior with Heavy Slam. If he goes for something like Substitute or Leech Seed, I will double immediately into my Tentacruel, which is Liquid Ooze. So if he Leech Seeds my Tentacruel, he's actually going to be losing HP rather than regaining HP. My Tentacruel will also be losing HP, but I do have the Black Sludge to uh, mitigate some of the HP that I lose. I can break his Substitute with Sludge Bomb if he has that, and I can also use this to spin Hazards away that he most likely will set with his Registeel. I think he's brought Registeel as his, hazard, as his hazard, hazard Setter almost every week. Uh, and then we have Toxic. Uh, for stuff like Vaporeon, uh, Togekiss as well, because even though we do have Sludge Bomb, uh, I we are not to hit KOing uh, most variants of Togekiss with Sludge Bomb. So I actually thought about running Assault Vest with like Sludge Bomb and then Venoshock, so that when I get the poison with Sludge Bomb, I can click Venoshock for, for more damage. But I decided it is I just go Black Sludge and then run Toxic for stuff like uh, the. Uh, Togekiss and his uh, his fatter mons that I can toxic and then notice we have hydro pump over something like scald uh, Because there isn't really much that I would be going for a burn against rather uh, outside of the uh, Registeel, but uh, if I don't get the burn and he stays in and just clicks earthquake Then he is whittling down my tentacruel much quicker than I would like him to so I think I'd rather just go for hydro pump uh, try to get as much damage off against the uh, Gliscor, the Arcanine, as uh, much damage off against those things as possible, and the Alolan Golem as well. If he, uh, if I don't have switch into that thing anymore, which I doubt that will ever be the case, uh, but Hydro Pop should be able to secure the KO on that thing, whereas Scald would not do enough damage to kill it. Next we have our other offensive Mon uh, next to uh, Crawdont, that's going to be an Expert Belt Zeraora. Uh, pretty standard coverage just to hit his team uh, with enough speed for max speed Jolly Lopany. And so the last move slot was a little bit of a, a debate between Volt Switch and uh, Hidden Power Ice for his uh, Gliscor. But I decided to bring nothing to hit his Gliscor, so he can wall me with that. Uh, but I do have a Celesteela that he can't do very much to. And I have two water types that can uh, hit him for a lot of damage as well. And my Hippowdon, which he shouldn't be able to touch, but I also can't touch him in return. So <laughs> I hope not running HP Ice doesn't come back to bite me, but it would basically I would basically be just running it for uh, the Gliscor. If he doesn't bring the Gliscor, then it would be kind of useless. And I would have regretted having Volt Switch to get that little bit of chip and momentum off against this team. At the very least, if I predict his Gliscor to come in before he has the Toxic Orb activated, I can click Knock Off to uh, get rid of it immediately, and then he will not be getting nearly as much recovery from the uh, Poison Heal. Next up, we have our uh, Hippowdon Max Physically Defensive. This set is necessary absolutely necessary to switch into his Megalopony. Uh, my fighting resists on my on this team kind of suck. I'm pretty sure my only two resistances are Mega Gallade and uh, Tentacruel. Tentacruel is not nearly physically defensive enough to take on a uh, Megalopony. You know what? I've just decided I'm going to get rid of Toxic on this because... I don't want to be giving his Gliscor free recovery if I don't need to. I know that Ice Fang isn't going to be doing uh, very much damage to it at all. Um, but I, as I've said, I don't really have much on this team for Gliscor anyway. So if he's more of an offensive Gliscor, then at least I'll be able to do damage to it that way. 
and if Celestela gets taken out somehow and I can't HP ice him, then I have this if I absolutely need to. Stealth Rock is going to be really nice for chipping down things like uh, Togekiss and the uh, Arcanine primarily. And we are also running Sandstream on Hipouton this week, so we are going to be setting the Sandstorm, which I hope I don't regret. I think I have I have a feeling that the chip damage from Sandstorm could uh, be more of a hindrance to his team than it would be to my team, so that's why I'm going for it. Like for example, it won't affect Celestela whatsoever. Uh, it'll chip down Crawdon a little bit, but oh well. I don't really need a ton of HP on Crawdon. I have Black Sludge on Tentacruel to cancel out the uh, damage that I would be taking from Sandstorm, and then. Zeraora will take a little bit from it as well, but that's fine. The one thing that I don't really want set up in Sandstorm is this uh, Meganium. And so I'm excited to be bringing this Meganium set. Um, it's very, it's a very strange set because its only attacking move is Dragon Tail. And I am packing the Dragonium Z as well. Um, mainly just for the Latias. I do not have great uh, switch-ins to Latias at all. Uh, if especially, especially if he has Thunderbolt, because if he has Thunderbolt, he'll KO my Crawdon, he can do a lot of damage to Celesteela. So this is going to be my main response to Latias, probably. I have Lead Seed to wear him down, if I can get him down to around 80% if he has like no defensive investment then I might be able to KO him with a Z Dragon Tail which he probably won't be expecting. Now I know I could have ran Z Outrage on this instead uh, but I wanted to make sure that I have Dragon Tail to force out some of his uh, obnoxious setup bonds such as um, well the main thing is Cursed Registeel. If he has if he has Cursed Regi Steel and I have nothing to force it out, then then I'm just gonna then I won't be able to do any damage to him. So that's why I wanted to have this uh, Meganium with the Dragon Tail. Uh, we have Aromatherapy as well to cure Toxics on my Hippowdon to cure Burns on my Celesteela. Synthesis for recovery. That's why I don't want this in with the Sandstorm up because if, of course, with Sandstorm I'll only be cover, re, I'll only be recovering 25% as opposed to 50%. And then, rather than just run Giga Drain as an attacking move, I'm actually just going to run Leech Seed because Giga Drain is not going to be doing anything to Vaporeon anyway, and it's not going to be doing very much damage to anything that he might want to switch into Meganium, such as the Arcanine, the Togekiss. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to run Leech Seed and then if he switches into something else that can take me on better, uh, I can switch out into uh, something else that is that and I'm going to be able to get the uh, recovery on my on the other mons on my team, such as like uh, I'll definitely take recovery on Tentacruel because I don't have reliable recovery like Kapowdon or Meganium does. So yeah, this is a team we're going to run with. Uh, as I said, very defensive, so probably going to be... Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it were a 40 plus turn game. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see if we can get our... Technically our third win of the season, but it will count for our fourth. I will see you guys right back with the battle. We are back with the battle and looking at the team that Moralt decided to bring, the first thing I see is Alolan Golem is here! And that's making me feel a lot better already because I know that I did not bring Shed Shell Celesteela for nothing. I feel really good about the scenario of him bringing in Golem to trap Celesteela and then getting in Hippowdon for free, getting my rocks up, and just gaining so much momentum from that exchange. I also noticed that he didn't bring either the Vaporeon or the Registeel, which means that Crawdont is not going to be nearly as easy to get in and break down some of his walls. Really the only thing that I can bring that in safely against would be a super defensive Gliscor that doesn't even like uh, two hit KO Crawdont with Earthquake, and even if he is super defensive, I think he might be able to do that anyway because I didn't put any investment in HP or defense. We do see the Latias, so we're going to have to be very careful about a uh, CMZ move variant. 
Uh, of course, we also have to watch out for a potential Z-move on his Alolan Golem, but I'm a lot less afraid of that. Three other Mons that did not come on his side, uh, there's no Togekiss, that probably would have been his best switch into my Mega Glade, but uh, the fact that I didn't bring it is probably a relief for him. No Cryagonal doesn't surprise me in the slightest. And then we also don't see Arcanine, which I'm glad not to see. I didn't necessarily have the best things to switch into that. I did have a Hippowdon and a Tentacruel that wasn't very physically defensive, so I wouldn't have enjoyed taking hits all that well. So either way, I'm glad not to see Arcanine. In terms of lead matchups, I figured that Hippowdon would have a good matchup against uh, two-thirds of his team. Pretty much the four mons that you see furthest to the right on your screen, Hippowdon matches up decently against. I could get my rocks up right away, uh, so that's what I'm going to decide to lead with. And it is worth noting that we um, did have a very unfortunate disconnect about halfway through this battle, so there will be some plays in the early going that are a bit uh, strange that uh, I will have to uh, explain why they were made. Uh, but anyway, Hippowdon's gonna lead here, and we're gonna get the Sandstorm up right away, uh, but unfortunately he leads with his Superior, so we're gonna have to switch out immediately into the Celesteela. This was always the plan. Scout out what kind of Superior set he is, and no surprise, he is a Leech Seed set, and I am definitely expecting him to go for Substitute on this turn. We also see the Leftovers, uh, that proc thanks to us having the sandstorm out so with without the sandstorm we would not have known that he was leftovers and maybe he would have been a little less likely to be sub uh, lead seed but that is definitely what uh, he's going to go for here he goes for the substitute as I get into my tentacruel uh, no lead seed going around here sandstorm is going to chip us down but we're each going to get our own recovery from black sludge and the leftovers and now my play is to simply break his sub, as right here, he goes for Elite Seed and misses, which was really, really funny. This, that was actually a misclick on his part. Uh, in the actual game, he clicked Leaf Storm and connected, and uh, did a little chunk of damage to my uh, Tentacruel. And, of course, uh, bringing himself up to plus two special attack. So... I was kind of weird. I was I wasn't sure really what to do from this point because my tentacle would have had a lot more uh, damage against it. But uh, Morel just said, "Screw it, we'll leave the tentacle at higher HP because he regained more uh, HP from Black Sludge as the turns went on anyway." So I end this exchange with a little bit more HP on my tentacle than uh, I would have had without the DC. Uh, but anyway. Uh, so the, the, the Superior went for another substitute there that uh, did happen in the real game and I probably would have been more inclined to make a prediction here had he not been plus two uh, from the Leaf Storm uh, but because he was plus two and still sitting in front of me there was no way I wasn't going to click Sludge Bomb against him uh, because he was a big threat with his uh, special attack boosted. So the gl uh, Gliscor comes in to eat the predicted Sludge Bomb and get his rocks up and I did figure that the, this uh, Gliscor was going to want to set up Stealth Rocks on this turn, so I did stay in, risk him getting a lot of damage off against me with the Earthquake, and thankfully I did outspeed him, uh, so I'm going to threaten him out on the next turn, uh, and I go for another Hydro Pump, not making a prediction that he might want to switch out. Um, I don't really have the best things to hit Gliscor, as I've mentioned before, so uh, I was going to take any damage on it I could get. Uh, if it was still on the field. So Latias comes in to eat that uh, Hydro Pump and sets up a Column Mind as the counter Meganium is going to come in. And in the real game, I went for Elite Seed on this turn because I needed the uh, Elite Seed to put him in range to die from my uh, Z uh, Dragon Tail. But uh, I actually missed my Leech Seed as he switched into uh, Scolipede on this turn. So that's why I clicked Aromatherapy, because it fails and uh, nothing happens on that turn, which uh, nothing happened in the real game on that turn either. So Celesteela is now going to come in against this Scolipede that cannot touch me. He goes for a Poison Jab, does no damage. And he doesn't show that he has Baton Pass there, which is something that he, a common move that he has brought uh, on his Scolipede, uh, even his Megalopony set sometimes, and he doesn't go for it right there. So it makes me think he probably doesn't have it. It's a good thing now that I don't have to deal with a, um, a speedier Alolan Golem, uh, because that would be something that my Crawdont couldn't outspeed potentially. And uh, 
But anyway, I still have my safe switch in to hip out on. I go for protect on this turn just to get that extra little bit of lead seed recovery. And now I'm going to be able to switch out of here as he's got me trapped in with the uh, magnet pole most likely. He's just spamming wild charge and hip out going to come in and of course be immune to the wild charge. And oh yeah, I totally forgot to mention that this is an air balloon golem and I can't touch him with an earthquake on this turn. The funny thing is, as when the golem came in in the field, I could tell that it was air balloon by the fact that it didn't make any noise when it hit the battlefield. As soon as I, as soon as I heard that, I thought that's kind of odd. That's probably an air balloon golem, and lo and behold, it was. Um, as I see the message pop up on the screen, uh, like the turn after, but uh, I'm gonna get my rocks up as he does uh, make a good play, stay in to get the toxic off against me. Uh, a play that I could have made there is uh, make an aggressive double into the Crawdont, knowing that there was no way he would go for a um, he would go for a uh, wild charge on that turn. Uh, although he could have made this switch into superior a lot earlier uh, than he did, and then that play would not have uh, been a good one for me. With a superior versus Crawdont matchup is no bueno. Uh, on that turn, though, I did predict his golem to switch out, and I brought in Meganium because I thought he might want to try to bring in the Latias. Uh, but instead, he brings in the Superior, and this Superior is going to turn out to have Defog. So because we've uh, seen, we, we now know his entire set. He sub Leech Seed, Defog, and Leaf Storm. So he has, he does not have the Hidden Power Fire. He doesn't have a super effective move for my Celesteela. Uh, the only way that he has to damage my Celesteela is through Leech Seed, pretty much. Uh, Leaf Storm is four times resisted, not going to be doing anything. So Tentacruel is my switch in now to this thing because I know it's a sub Leech Seed set. After he defogs, I'm going to predict him to switch out, uh, and I do catch the Latias on the switch with a Toxic, which is going to be really nice. Uh, it means that I no longer have to uh, click Leech Seed with my Meganium to put it into a range where I can kill it with the Devastating Drake. And that's the switch I'm going to make once again. Uh, Meganium is going to come back in, and uh, unfortunately it had to take a little bit of Sandstorm chip the last time it came in, uh, but I should still be at a range where I should be able to uh, survive a hit from this uh, Calmine Latias unless he is uh, Devastating Drake, which I am also on my Meganium, which is kind of funny, but uh, he doesn't go for it on this turn. I was really thinking there is a good chance that my Meganium would go down to a Z move on that turn because Golem came in, we saw that it was Air Balloon and not Z-Move, so that means Latias is a lot more likely to be carrying a Z-Move. Because he doesn't go for it there, it makes, makes me thinking that he was probably uh, like Gigavolt Havoc for uh, my Celesteela. Because uh, he presumably has Roost, so Dragon Pulse and Thunderbolt would be his only two attacks. But, Meganium gets the kill with the Z-Move on the Latias. That is perfect. Uh, that right there was the main reason that I asked Meralt to play through those first 20 turns all over again, uh, because I needed that, <laughs> I needed that, uh, Meganium Z-Move animation for the thumbnail, as, uh, you've probably seen that already, but. Anyway, now we're back to the point where we originally DC'd. His Megalophony comes in to revenge my Meganium that I no longer need. He reveals that he has Power Up Punch, uh, which is kind of scary, so he's going to be doing lots and lots of damage with that thing. Uh, I am not messing around with a plus one Megalopony. I'm going straight into my Zero Aura and clicking Close Combat as he does switch out into the Scolipede to eat that four times resisted hit. Now he's going to switch around on me a little bit. I'm not, I don't fully understand some of these uh, switches that he made. Uh, I feel like if he was scouting for HP Ice, then he just should have gone into the uh, Gliss score immediately. Uh, because I could have easily brought in uh, Celesteela on that turn against his Scolipede, and I guess he didn't think that Celesteela had anything that uh, to hit his uh, Gliscor, but turns out he was wrong. I tried dropping in my Crawdon here, but then he makes a double into his Megalopony. So if he was scouting for HP Ice on that turn, why would you go Megalopony? Because I'm still going to outspeed and be able to click close combat and the cycle continues, so... Those kind of plays, th those plays confuse me a little bit, but that's fine. I didn't lose too much from it. Uh, Hippowdon has to come in to eat a hit from this thing now. I'm not prepared to let my uh, Crawdon go down so early. And I'm thinking now, uh, he takes the Rocky Helmet and Sandstorm Chip as well on the Megalopony. So Sandstorm also helps uh, 
uh, coupled with the uh, Rocky Helmet Chip, uh, after like two attacks, he's going to be down near like 50% with his Lopany, or not quite that low, closer to 60, but I decide to go for my Stealth Rocks rather than click Slack Off on that turn because I'm seeing an end game in mind that could uh, involve me spamming uh, Choice Banded Aqua Jet with my uh, Crawdont to win this game uh, because I would need that. Uh, if I get the Rock Ship on the Superior and the Scolipede, I think I can put them both in range to where Choice Bandit Aqua Jet can kill them. Uh, but for now, I'm going to switch in my Celesteela against the uh, Gliscor, and he actually goes for Taunt. Uh, clearly not expecting me to have Hidden Power Ice, and that does a decent chunk to him, but not that much. He definitely is a very defensive uh, Gliscor set. So, uh, I am predicting him to go for a Roost here, because... Once he gets rid of his flying typing, HP Ice is not going to be dealing four times super effective damage. It's only going to be dealing, uh, uh, it would only do half as much as the last one did. So he'd be constantly regaining HP from that exchange. So knowing that he will roost, I get my Crawdon in to basically claim a kill right here. As long as I hit my Crab Hammer, I am not over predicting. I'm clicking the attack. It does the most damage to what's in front of me, and I'm so glad to get rid of that Gliscor because I didn't, as as I've mentioned numerous times, didn't have the best ways of hitting it. But it is now gone, and I am going to decide to save my Crawdont because I still have my Tentacruel at very high HP. The Superior is going to go for the Defog once again to get rid of my rocks. But at this point, Tentacruel is in a good position to uh, just click Sludge Bomb and get some damage off against something. And if he stays in, then the superior is going to go down. But he doesn't stay in, he just goes right into the uh, Scolipede to eat the predicted uh, Sludge Bomb here. Not going to do all that much, but I do get some nice damage off. And I'm going to decide to stay in with my Tentacruel on this turn and go for a Hydro Pump. Try to get that damage off against it that I want for my Crawdont to potentially clean up. Also knowing that there is a good chance he would predict my Celesteela to come in against the Scolipede again, try to make a double into this Alolan Golem, and if that was the play that he made, Hydro Pump, uh, hope, uh, as long as it connects, uh, would get rid of his Golem, and that now gives me a 5-3 to three advantage in this game, which is really nice. Um, Tentacruel, worth noting, in both uh, games, in the initial game and the uh, uh, game that we, and this game, this replay here, uh, the, the the recreation of it connected every single one of its hydro pumps. Uh, I clicked hydro pump five times and hit it all five times. So very well trained tentacle uh, that you have uh, uh, witnessed in this battle. Uh, but anyway, I left tentacle in there to take uh, some fake out damage just in case he was substitute Lopany because I don't want him getting a free sub up as I go into my hip out on and sack it off. Uh, he actually get, is going to take two rounds of uh, Sandstorm and Rocky Helmet here because he goes for the power-up punch to get to plus two. But uh, that doesn't scare me one bit because I still have my Zera Aura in the back to outspeed him. Bring it in as I uh, fodder off my uh, uh, hip out on there. Uh, and I click Plasma Fist now because the Rocky Helmet and Sandstorm has brought him to a range where I don't have to click Close Combat, I can click Plasma Fist and that would do more damage to an incoming Scolipede. It wouldn't do more damage to a Superior, but the Superior is so low I don't care about that anyway. Two Plasma Fists would definitely kill. He's going to bring this in now. Um, I think he should have brought in Scolipede on this turn, but it didn't really matter what he did actually because uh, neither his Superior or Scolipede remaining could do any sorts of damage to my Celesteela. So at this point, the game is wrapped up. Uh, we had known previously that uh, Superior's only attacking move was uh, Leaf Storm, so there's no way he can touch Celesteela. And as it turns out, this uh, Scolipede set is Protect, Swords Dance, Poison Jab, and Earthquake. Uh, two moves that uh, literally don't do any damage to Celesteela. So as soon as Mega Lopany went down, I basically had this game in the bag. I'm going to Volt Switch uh, into the Celesteela now to preserve Differential, and as he goes for a meaningless Sword Dance on the last turn, I'm going to kill him off with a Heavy Slam, and your Red Gyarados are going to pick up this 4-0 win against Meralt and his Slovenia Slowbros. Very good game to him. Make sure you go check out his side of the battle. Go check out his channel, of course. Links will be in the description. My pathway to victory in this game, in my mind, was pretty simple. As long as I could get rid of Latias, I would be in really good shape to uh, wall the majority of his team. Uh, I thought I had 
all the right pieces to take on everything except for the Latias. That was the one thing that really could have uh, came in and uh, broke through my defensive core. But getting rid of that thing early was 100% the key to victory. Uh, once Latias was out of the way, he really just didn't have the didn't have the coverage on his team to be able to break through me and uh, as a result of that I get a massive chunk of differential back that I had lost in the uh, uh, previous weeks of course with the forfeit win last week I got three free differential points and now I get uh, four more to get all the way back up to a uh, even differential I also definitely derailed a huge portion of his game plan by bringing Shed Shell Celestila because he did not bring very good ways of doing damage to it outside of uh, trapping me with the Alolan Golem and clicking Wild Charge. Basically, while well, his, his Scolipede we know could not touch me, Gliscor could not touch me, uh, the only thing he could do to me was Taunt. Superior, the only source of damage he had against me was Leech Seed. Leaf Storm, is, Leaf Storm does not count even if he's going to boost up uh, to plus six, he's still not going to be doing any sorts of damage to me. Uh, and then, yeah, so that's half of his team that literally could not do anything to my Celesteela. He, uh, the Megalopony could, uh, click High Jump Kick against me, but he was, he's also risking me, uh, clicking Protect. So if I get the Protect off against him, then, and he, on the turn that he clicks High Jump Kick, then he is taking a huge chunk of recoil. So, uh, his prep for Celesteela, I don't know, maybe a bit suspect. Yeah, he could have, I think he wished that he had brought Arcanine as another option to uh, deal with my Celesteela, uh, but because he didn't, uh, Celesteela just was unbreakable for him in this game. So with this clean 4-0 win, as I mentioned, back up to neutral differential, uh, we are four and two. There are, I, I think there are four uh, teams total, including myself that are four and two. Uh, so we're sitting in fifth place in the league right now. Uh, we have the worst differential among the uh, four, four and two teams. So we still have some work to do because uh, fifth seed, well, fifth seed is where we were in the D-League season with fewer coaches. Uh, hopefully we can bring ourselves up a little bit more. I'm thinking with five games left to play that three wins in those uh, last five will be enough to uh, get myself into playoffs. So that's going to be my goal. Uh, but hopefully if I can keep winning, go like 4-1 and one or maybe even 5-0 and oh in the last couple of weeks, then I could potentially get a uh, one of the top two seeds and get a bye to the semifinals of uh, IBL this time. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for future IBL videos. Next week, week 7, we were going to be taking on Tone and his Miami Mallow Marlins, but he has had to drop from the league, and instead we will be facing... Uh, Phantom Base, who will be using Tone's original uh, roster, so we don't have to change up uh, a bit of our prep or anything. And that game is going to be on Showdown because uh, I believe Phantom Base has misplaced his 3DS and can only play on Showdown. So we're going to have to deal with that and make the most of it, and uh, hopefully we can improve to 5 and 2, get our differential into the positives. Uh, uh, finally. So we will see you again next week.